Hi there, it's Mr. Robs. And Mr. Co. And we are going to be changing linear graphs to their equations. And on today's uh, lesson, we will be given a graph and we'll put it into this y equals mx plus b, which is called the slope intercept form. Because m is the slope and b is the intercept. And then we'll put it into ax plus b equals c, which is our standard form. And with standard form, a, b, and c should all be integers. There shouldn't be any fractions. And then we'll do vertical and horizontal lines. We'll talk about those. And lastly, we'll talk about what it means to show that a point is on the line. All right, so those four things we hope to achieve today. Here's the first example we'll take a look at. So given the graph, put in slope-intercept form. So we want it to look like y equals mx plus b. So in order to do that, Mr. Cole, we need M okay. and we need B. All right. So um, I would start with the B, actually. All right. It's probably the easiest one. Yeah, so we can just see the, the intercept. Right there. Is 4 up. Right. So, so it's, B is 4. B is 4, the Y-intercept okay. is B. Okay, and then? And then our slope. Um, I would like to draw a triangle just to show us... What's going on? So, so we pick two coordinates that lie on the line. Right. So nice ones that are on the grid. This is our, these are pretty close, but this one that I just shaded looks even better yet. Okay. So that looks like it's the best one. And then what we need is the rise and the run. So we just draw a triangle. Doesn't matter which way up you go. You want to do this one here? Sure. Okay. So the rise is how much we've gone up. Okay. So there's a rise of two. Okay. So if I'm gonna, but if I'm gonna, am I gonna go from red to green or green to red? Um, I tend to just do the negatives at the end. Oh, okay. See? So just, we know it's going downhill if we go from left to right. Okay. So we know it's going to be a negative gradient. All right, so and just so you go two. Two is the rise. And, and what's that? One, five? two, three, four, five. Five. So rise over run. And then the whole thing is negative. The gradient's negative because we're going downhill. Right. Me, I always think about going down as a negative value and going to the right is always positive. That's positive, because okay. yep. I know this is positive x. Now, if we would go the other direction, go around, if I would go this way and then that way, I would go up a positive 2, that's my rise, and then I would go left 5, which would be the negative. And so you get 2 over negative 5, and those are both the same. Those are equal. It doesn't matter okay. if the negative is on top or bottom. We typically put it on the top, but they are equivalent. So now we have all our bits. We just plug in our equation. Okay. So, so y got equals negative two fifths x plus four. Plus four. And we're allowed to have fractions in the slope intercept form, right. or the gradient intercept form. Right. Okay. All right, gradient. Oh. If depending. Depending on which side of the pond you live on. You just have to recognize both of them. So gradient and slope are the same right. thing. Multicultural today. <laughs> All right, so here's a similar one, except we want to place in standard form. Standard form looks like this. And our strategy for this kind of scenario is to still to start off with y equals mx plus b and then convert it to this scenario. So again, we need m and we need b. Okay. B, so I'll do the easy one. B is negative 1. Okay, and I get the slope. All right, so actually... Yeah, it just looks like it goes one up and two along. Okay, and then we just think, is our slope going uphill or downhill? So from left to right, it's going up, so it's positive a half. Okay, and we always read graphs left to right, just like we read words on a page. So it's when we went up the hill, it's positive. So y then equals one half x minus one. Okay, now we have to convert it to this form here. And we want A, B, and C to be integers. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is get rid of any fractions. Right, and so when the way we've been talking about all year is to get rid of fractions, we multiply by the common denominator, which would be 2. Yep. We multiply by 2, and I get 2y. Distribute the 2 is 2 over 2x minus 2. Well, 2 over 2x is simply 1. So I have, Do you have 2y equals x minus 2. y equals x minus 2. 
And then I like to keep the X's positive. Does it right. matter to you? Um, I Technically, it should be positive. I like to keep it positive as well. And so if we bring the X over, I get a negative X plus 2Y equals negative 2. And it's bad form to keep a negative in front because sometimes you don't see it. It's lost. So we multiply everything by the negative. So we get X minus 2Y is equal to positive 2. That is standard form. Integers and X is positive. Okay. All right. We're working on vertical and horizontal lines now. Okay, so these are totally different. You don't try and put these in y equals mx plus b. You just right. have to recognize that they're horizontal or vertical. Right, so you need a new strategy when it's vertical and horizontal. Let's do the blue line first, which is our horizontal line. And if I look at all of these coordinate points here, that's 3 comma 4. This one here is 9 comma 4. This is 0 comma 4. This is negative 7 comma 4. And so what's similar about all these values here, Mr. Cole? Okay, well they've all got the same y coordinate. Right. And so because they all have the same y coordinate of 4, I know that this equation is simply y equal to 4. So all the points where y is 4, make that line. Um, on a side note, what's the slope of that line then? Okay, the slope of that, well the rise would be 0. 0. And the run would be anything. Right, it could yeah? be any number. But 0 divided by any number is 0. Right. So the slope or the, is, of that line is 0. Right, on a side note. So the equation is y equal to 4. That's the big thing that you need to know. That's one thing. Now, the vertical line, we'll change it over to pink. The vertical line, if I do the same kind of idea where I look at these points, this is the point negative 3, oh, negative 1. This is the point negative 3, 0. The point negative 3, 4. Okay. What's common about all those points now, Mr. Cole? Okay, so now it's the x value that's the same, the x coordinate. Right. So you can say for every point on that line, x equals negative 3. So mm -hmm. that's how we describe our... Our line. And that is the equation, x equals negative 3. And you just have to remember that vertical lines are x equals negative 3, or x equals a number. Horizontal lines are y equal numbers. And the slope of this line? Well, this one's a bit more confusing, isn't it? Because yeah. you get, this time the run is 0. So you get like any number over 0. Right, over 0, which? And that is undefined. Right, so the slope we call undefined. Okay, so you can't divide by zero. Right. Okay, last one. We want to show that this point, square root 5, comma 7, is on the line 2 root 5. This is the number, x minus y is 3. Okay. So, um, let's just label it up. So our root 5 and our 7 is our x and our y. Okay. Yep. And the whole idea here is we want to see if this point is on it. So that means it mu if it is on the line, it satisfies this equation. So both the left and the right will be equal. Okay, so let's look at the left side. If I plug in my points, I get 2 root 5, plug in x is root 5, that's my x, minus my y. And so 2 root 5 root 5 is? 2 times 5 which is 10. Times 5 minus 7, which is 10 minus 7, which, which is, is three. 3. The right side equals 3. The left side equals the right side. So we know that the point is on the line. Okay. So every point that's on that line will work. It will, the left side will equal the right side. At any point away from the line, it's not going to work, right? Right. Exactly. So if the left side does not equal the right side, your conclusion is the point is not on the line. Okay. Sounds good.